or not. Uh, but first of all, let me say, um, I want to thank Commissioner Leverett, Commissioner Raccone, Commissioner Keene, and Commissioner Gannon for the great work that I think you've done with the budget uh, and did it in a very timely fashion under some very unusual circumstances and made some really, really tough decisions. So I want to thank y'all. I want to thank Jeff and Shannon uh, for the work that y'all two put into this every year. You know, we're in the middle of audit right now. We're putting our budget together. They do so much that we really don't appreciate, but I want to thank them and I want to thank Kyle and Melissa. Melissa did a great job on the minutes. I don't think we had a single budget meeting and we had several back-to-back -back days that we didn't have the minutes prepared the very next day. So, Melissa, thank you. You had a great teacher in Shelly who that was one of her goals and I know she told you if you didn't do it, you were gonna be in trouble. That's not true, but that's okay. And, and then Kyle, just for orchestrating uh, all of our meetings, setting up in here, and then lastly to the IT department that's just done a great job with all of our video conferencing, telephone calls, WebEx, all of that stuff. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna get right into the budget and we really took a different approach this year. Um, we did it a lot differently. We, we actually did not have a single department come before us from the operating standpoint. And so what you see up here, we're gonna look at this a lot different than you, than you typically see it. And we're gonna really try to break it down uh, where I think you won't have to dig into budgets and see it. But just roughly, this is our estimated ending fund balance of 27,452. You can see the fund balances in all the different funds. Um, and then if you just scroll up just a little bit, Shannon, and so you see our beginning fund balance, our projected revenues, our total revenues, uh, salaries, benefits, health insurance, uh, all of the different things, and, but an ending fund balance of 30921845 We're getting some feedback from somebody on WebEx. Uh, if you would, make sure your microphone's muted. Thank you. Um, and so we started this whole process. I recommendation to the budget committee that we really thought we needed to set some money back. And what I mean by that is we needed to uh, try to increase our fund balance as much as we could, not knowing what our revenues would be. If you look back on when this virus took place, uh, as unfortunate and as costly as it's been, not only from a human life standpoint, but from, a economy, from our economy standpoint, and from, I think, a mental health standpoint, um, it, it really happened at a pretty good time for us. Uh, because if it would have happened in October, when we really start collecting property taxes, which is our big revenue, I don't know what our revenue would have done. I truly don't. And so uh, most, I think, 96, 97 percent of our property taxes had been paid prior to when we started shutting things down. And so I think it's important uh, as we go into our next fiscal year, I think Jeff and Shannon did a really good job on our, on our estimated revenues. Uh, I think they were very conservative. Uh, and so I think it's something that we're gonna be okay with, but we just felt like that we couldn't just pretend like nothing was going on. We had to try to set some money back. And so the budget committee kind of agreed with that philosophy and we took the, the standpoint of, did I turn that off? Okay. We took the standpoint of in January, we'll come back and look at some things and we'll look at it from a standpoint. If, if the economy's turned around and things are doing good, there may be some things that will come back to the commission that we may approve that were asked for that were cut, or we may have to tighten some strings even more. And so that's, that's kind of the approach we took. And so I could go through all of this, but Shannon, if you'd go to uh, the summary sheet. And so this is really how we started looking at our overall budget. And so here again are our general fund revenues. We have a one time um, and we have a resolution Monday night approving uh, acceptance of these funds from the uh, Governor Lee to state stimulus money of $2,097,099. And then we took all of our capital project uncommitted dollar or pennies and moved them over into the revenue. And so when you 
look at the previous sheet, you see that we, you saw there's uh, revenues and capital project. As an exercise, we put it all right here. So we so, said we had 107,569,172 in revenues. Salaries and benefits with no COLA, no step increase, oh, excuse me, no COLA at all for any county employees, 67,497, 427. And please, if you have a question at any time through this process, my back may be turned, but Kyle, you can let me know and uh, I'll turn around and we'll try to answer your question. We know we have a, a increase from the insurance trust of 502, 900,000. Then on the operating budget, 26,365,193. That is pretty much flat from where we were last year with the exception of a couple of things. And those things are, Jeff, you may have to help me with this, uh, and I'll just let you explain it. Uh, the biggest increases we had were with, of course, jail, medical, and dental. We increased that by $2 million. Um, another increase was, I believe, about two, 120, up to $250,000 for the county attorney. Uh, legal services and then if y'all recall the resolution we passed regarding um, lawsuits and claims and judgments and everything where anything below 25,000 would be handled through the loss control committee so we increased that budget to 250,000 to handle those instances and then well that way we build that up and then if we have to at the end of the year if that money hasn't been spent we can put it over in reserve to use for the next year. And, and uh, I might add on the, on the legal side of it, not on the risk management side, but on the legal side of it, we are, we are loss control met today. We're, we have a lawsuit against us and we've had to bring in some, uh, an outside attorney and we were estimating those may be the fees. We don't know, but we wanted to make sure that we put enough money in there. And so any questions on the operating budget with the exception of jail meds, uh, the, the increase in the legal and the risk management fund, th our, our operating budgets were flat. Anybody have any questions? Commissioner Harper. Essentially, you did four tenths of the capital project of the general fund, right? Pretty much, yep. 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 And, and as, we get, you know, as we go through here and we show you capital projects, when we go back to the very first sheet you look at, those funds are actually over into the capital projects fund but just as an exercise to see where we were, we just put it all right here. And so next is our, our step increases. Uh, there was some talk about step increases in the budget committee and I'll entertain any of y'all chiming in at any time, uh, but we felt like it would get our pay plan out of whack if we didn't address our step increases. Uh, you recall two years ago, uh, our exempt employees had not had a step increase and we funded that and I don't remember what it cost us but we caught up and so if we don't fund it we're just going to get behind and our, our step increases are based on your years of service with the county which I don't necessarily agree with but that's the way our pay matrix is and so uh, we felt like we should go ahead and fund the step increases. Any question on step increases? Yes, ma'am. How many different departments was involved and how many people on the step increases? I, I don't know that number off the top of my head. Uh, Tim Swad, would you? I don't know the number, but the key to the step increase is on years of service, so it's the 10th year anniversary. It's an increase that covers all the departments. It's just not particularly one county side. It's just general the years of service and everything that goes along. Has any of them topped out with a step increase, Tim? Will this be a top out? Some of it is possible too if you go to like the step one to meet those pay matrix, then therefore it'll top out the next year. Some of them are already topped out. Okay. So we don't look at that. You have a few of the exempt employees that are topped out. They've got 26 plus years of service, so they are topped out. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions on step increases? All right, so next are our capital outlay. And so, Shannon, if you'd jump to that sheet. This, just so everybody can see this, we're gonna have to scroll through this quite, uh, quite a bit. But um, if, you, um, if you look at the cuts that were made in the mayor's office, uh, the registered deeds, there was uh, $60,000 for computer storage, somebody 
correct me if I'm wrong, that's paying out of reserves. Uh, but, but that does affect our bottom line. Uh, roads compliance, the vehicle was cut. Uh, the office chairs at the public safety complex, you got a quick trigger over there, tra uh, Shannon. Um, those were something that I think got cut in the beginning. Yes, sir. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna get there. Okay. I'm gonna get there. Um, the, uh, the chairs were something that were cut originally and I, members of the budget committee helped me. I think we came back and we looked at that because that was their general purpose meeting room and they had a bunch of broke chairs. We went ahead and funded those chairs. Uh, we cut the security glass. That was, uh, that is a film that goes over the exterior glass that makes it basically bulletproof, both sides. And so it's something that we looked at. We thought if we could fund it, that was one of the items that we tentatively wanted to fund. But when we came back and looked at it and based on what I think the budget committee, and I don't know if any of y'all want to speak to that, but we felt like it was something that could wait one year. Uh, it actually, the, if you would, please turn your mic yeah. microphone on. The, the actual, uh, the whole concept behind it came from Cal. Okay. Yeah, so it, it did, correct me if I'm wrong, but it wasn't a public safety request other than from us, correct? And I'm not trying to blame it all on you either, Cal. <laughs> okay, I, yeah, I agree, I agree. It's was this at the, we're talking about at the county complex? Can, we can, we can, I just prefer to not tell you which buildings while we're live streaming. Right. Yeah, some county buildings, not all county buildings. Okay. I can hear. Uh, the security alarms at the property unit, we felt like that was a public safety issue. We wanted to leave that in. Uh, you can see we cut the cell phones. Uh, tables for civic hall, uh, a couple of vehicles, a dump trailer, uh, the hot water pressure washer. Uh, that was something that was put on the tentative list and we came back and approved it. Uh, I don't know if Kenneth, if you're online, I think that's mainly gonna be used at the downtown commons, is that correct? And elsewhere? Veterans flies as well, but it is a hot water pressure, uh, um, pressure washer, uh, the, the lawn debris, uh, vacuum, the ride on scrubber, uh, the washing machine, because of the way they're cleaning now and using microfiber cleaning towels, we need, felt like we needed to fund that. I feel really bad having my back to you, I'm sorry. Uh, cut the vacuum cleaner. Archives, uh, there were several items cut there, uh, the scanner, uh, all of those different things. Cut the vehicle from purchasing. Um, property assessor. Uh, there are some security issues there for uh, cameras. The laser laser measure and the and the vehicle were um, two items that we discussed, not at length, but we had a pretty lengthy discussion about them. The laser measures actually increase the proficiency of the appraisers that are the assessors that are out in the field. And then from a vehicle standpoint, they had a vehicle that had been passed down through I think two departments and it was basically on its last leg. And so that was the justification behind the, um, the vehicle um, at the assessor's office. All this was approved at the county clerk's office. These will all be reserved dollars, correct me if I'm wrong, Shannon. Um, and we felt like, especially the big ticket item there is the kiosk, and that'll be a kiosk that'll be located out in the lobby where people can do transactions out in the lobby. It's gonna speed their process up. Why it's on my mind, and we'll, we'll talk about it a little bit later, uh, in a conversation I had with Kelly today, from July 1 to today, they are up 10,000 customers from last year. 10,000 customers. That's a pretty big number. Uh, IT, uh, you can see what we cut. Uh, a couple of laptops, uh, the iPads for the officers. Uh, 
somebody's got to help me there. Were those four uh, animal control officers? Animal control officers. Uh, we felt those were necessary. The GTACs for EMA, that is a super duper heavy duty laptop, uh, but support public safety. Okay, if you'll come down. We probably struggle for those that have been on the budget committee or or, or currently on it now, we probably always struggle with IT's capital outlay budget. Uh, it's usually pretty big. Uh, there's, I understand it. We need to maintain technologies, but uh, I got to. I have to give uh, the IT department credit. They came back, especially on their desktops and their on the desktops, especially, and cut this number drastically. Uh, and we'll have to play catch up. We we understand. Uh, I can't tell you what Aruba is other than it's a little island somewhere in the uh, maybe the Caribbean or I don't know even know what ocean it's in. <laughs> Atlantic, thank you. Uh, but if you have any questions about this, I know Skip's here and I think Jared's online. Uh, we can answer uh, any questions related to that. One thing that um, I, I advocated for in the budget committee cut were new iPads for y'all. Uh, but we just felt like I think in the sentiment of the budget committee is that hey let's we just keep what we got for another year and get through this tough time that we could potentially be dealing with and so um, we made some big cuts in the courtroom presentation software uh, Commissioner Riccone suggested setting a, a window cutting a hole in the roof and setting a window unit there to cool that data center uh, I don't know if that's what they're going to do. And then some cl closed circuit TVs for animal control and county clerk were cut. And then the mini minivan tech vehicle, we left that in. Uh, when the folks from IT go back and forth to the different departments, they're hauling a bunch of valuable, valuable stuff. And they're doing it in their own vehicles. We're paying a mileage and they really just need some type of utility van to s transport that, that, that gear back and forth. Um, circuit court, these are reserves. This was several items, Shannon, uh, but it's coming out of reserves. Some chairs that are also coming out of reserves. Uh, the phone system at DA, was that reserves? Okay, you got to turn your microphone on too when you talk. The phone system is not reserves. Okay. I don't, budget committee, I, I don't recall the, the phone system at the DA's. Do y'all? I don't even remember us talking about that. Like, where did, did I don't, I, I really don't recall us talking about that. I don't know. We did. We did. It was the one request that they had. They have a very small budget. They do some victim assessment money that they have, but they do have a small county budget. She was here. It was Diane Kinslow. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, I do okay, recall okay, it being okay. there. I remember now. her. I just, yeah. okay, I didn't recall that. Thank you, thank you. Okay. And then down to the sheriff's office. Um, and I, I want to say uh, thank you to the sheriff's office. They usually have a pretty big uh, capital outlay request, but uh, you can see what, what we cut. Um, on the night vision helmets, we felt like this completed them. Uh, I think this completely equips them. Uh, so we left that in there, the taser agreement installment. That's the third year of a three year agreement on the ta taser deal. We could have put that off, but we felt we ought to go ahead and, and get all, all of our tasers updated. You can see what, the, uh, what we cut out of the vehicle fleet uh, at the sheriff's department. I don't remember exactly what that equates to. Um, Hold on just one moment. I can it, a certain amount of patrol vehicles. I think it was 11 patrol vehicles, four unmarked vehicles, and then one jail transport van. Okay. That's going to put us a little bit behind on the fleet replacement at the sheriff's department, but I think the sheriff was understanding of it, and you'll see we do, had to do the same thing uh, at EMS. Uh, and a drug task force vehicle. Is that drug task force funding? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. And then to the jail, uh, 
one might ask why would we do food carts uh, and cut some of this other stuff, but uh, we just felt like based on what was presented to us that those food carts were in really, really bad shape. I think they were even leaking food and they needed replacing. They, I don't remember how old they were, but I think they, they were old. Yeah, and weren't keeping the food warm as well. Thank you, Commissioner Leverett. So you can see the, the cuts there. Fire service, if you'd scroll up a little bit. Um, battery packs, uh, chargers, these are for some um, breathing units. We left in the rescue cache. I don't remember what it was. A rope rescue cache kit. A what? A rope rescue cache, truck cache kit. Okay. Yes. And then EMA. We left the radios and the spark board in. Uh, and quite frankly, we cut the spark board from the sheriff's department. I don't remember leaving this in. I think we either need to cut that or add the one back for the sheriff's department. All of them going back in because we were going to get in uh, three for a cheaper price or two for a cheaper price. They were 30 each, or you're going to report back whether or not. I think we approved up to three with a cap. Maybe. I did hear back on that, and uh, unfortunately, the only way we get any kind of discount was at five, and it was only going to be a couple thousand, so we would have to buy three more than we needed to get that discount. So it didn't really, didn't really work out that way. So I don't, so the price is, is what we brought it forth with. It's that, that, that thing right there, that, that big board right there. And they, it, it, they have absolutely been invaluable uh, in, the, in the time that we're in. And so, I, Shannon, if you'll scroll back up, I don't know what the, uh, uh, what the Sheriff's Department uh, there's 33. I don't know why the difference in the two. Uh, but that may be something that we want to add back in. The budget committee's voted on it, but if somebody wants to make a note and delete one of those or add it back in, uh, I'd certainly be comfortable either way. <laughs> yeah, down some more, please. Um, okay. Yeah, when well you see the uh, additional cuts that were made in uh, EMA, or EMA, EMA excuse me, uh, animal control, uh, portable radio, they've had some instances with some uh, animal control officers uh, being in bad situations and not having the ability to talk to anybody, and this just gets them out of that situation. The multi-purpose vehicle, um, Somebody's got to help me there. I, 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 don't, I don't recall exactly. Dave, are you online? Dave Kasky? What's the description on that? Just has multi-purpose vehicles. I recall it was just a vehicle to replace one of their existing um, can, uh, trucks they have, and I think he's going more with a van Something like that. Over 200,000 miles? Yes. Okay. Right. Yeah. Uh, the microchip reader, uh, they asked for two of them, only gave them one. Uh, EMS, probably the big ticket item here. Uh, they did cut 7,000 out of the power cots. Uh, HVAC at uh, station 25, and then replacing the a bunch of the mattresses. Parks, most of that furniture, I uh, know, Jerry, you're here. Most of that furniture is for uh, the nature center. N nature center. Uh, that's a project that we have going on. The cargo van, I think we, we all agreed that that was needed. Uh, and the tables and then the utility vehicle uh, also was needed. But you can see the items that were cut. Uh, the Bobcat, the zero turn mower, the Ventrac, um, pull behind mower, and then all these other products, and fencing at Civitan. 
So our total capital outlay budgets, 1,207,990. Jeff, I don't know what that was last year. Was it over 4 million? Three, just under 4 million. Just yes, under sir. $4 million. Okay. Uh, Shannon, if you go back to the summary sheet, please, ma'am. Uh, now we're on capital projects, 3,312,432. If you'd pull that up, we'll just go through those real quick. Uh, the airport was going to add some hangers. Those were cut. You can see what was cut at EMA. Uh, we did uh, the one-ton uh, four-by-four vehicle. Uh, we left that in, thought it was needed. You can see there was a significant cut in EMS uh, for the ambulance fleet. Fire service, the pumper tanker combination, we left that in. Uh, they are adding a new station at Salem, and to maintain our ISO rating, we have to have a certain amount of units on standby when we equip the uh, Salem station. That gets us under the requirements for the minimum units on standby, and so that's basically the reason that that was left in. Uh, but you can see that we cut the ladder truck. Uh, we cut their uh, air packs uh, a little bit, not a whole lot. Uh, upgrade heavy hydraulic rescue tools and sonar for the, rest, uh, for the squad boat, those were cut. If you could scroll back up uh, just a little bit more. Uh, was that the uh, brush truck? I, I, I have to tell y'all a funny story. Uh, as we were going through the budget committee, uh, th this was titled brush truck. Uh, or whatever, one-ton brush truck. And uh, Commissioner Riccone had a problem with it. And he was like, I, what is a brush truck for? Do you just put it in a, put brush in it and haul it off? And I was like, yeah, you put brush in it and haul it to a brush fire is what you do with it. So it was a pretty light moment, uh, one of our few in the budget committee. <laughs> so uh, uh, county buildings, uh, we have a really bad roof out at the Bar T Center out in Cumberland Heights, replacing that. And then, commissioners, you recall, we went through uh, a lot of work in the last couple of years, and we've actually had some design money uh, for these different ball fields, uh, and all of those were cut. If you scroll just a little bit more. Uh, one item that we may come back and address is this public safety training complex, the burn tower. There's some grant funds that are available out there for that. And the budget committee, we don't have to have the funding in place right now. And so we elected to take it out of the budget. And if we get the grant, then we may have to come back and fund that. Um, unfortunately, the, the, the branch, the north branch of the library, um, Veterans Plaza roof, last year we funded, I think it's about $1.4 million for that roof, and the price went up drastically, but we've got a bad roof at Veterans Plaza that needs replacing, and the, the, the budget committee, I think I can speak on behalf of them, they all felt it was a maintenance item that we needed to address. The jail kitchen floor, uh, they presented some uh, some information on that uh, that warranted that being part of our capital projects. The old jail sewer, and I know we've had a lot of discussion in the chambers regarding the old jail and the potential use of it to move the workhouse. And we really don't know what, that's, what to do that, that sewer's gotta be replaced. That's just a number out of the dark. And so we allocated $100,000 for an engineering study to come in and do a cost estimate on what that would take to repair that uh, jail sewer. And then IT, uh, you can see that unfortunately uh, we made some big cuts there. Uh, the Tiber software, Clerk and Master, those are most of that's reserve dollars uh, at a Clerk, a clerk and Master. Um, the software at Building and Codes, the city is doing that this year. It would have been the cheapest time for us to do it, uh, but we just felt like it was a pretty big ticket item. And then phase two of the security cameras and the digital video security 
for the jail were cut. So we <coughs> excuse me. We approved three million three twelve four thirty two uh, for capital projects, and we last year was how much, Jeff? I believe it was around fourteen point seven million. Fourteen point seven million. Okay. Shannon, if you go back, please. Next is new employees, 230,634, if you click on that new employee tab. <laughs> Most of these you're gonna see were cut. And if you'll just scroll down till you get to the first one that was approved, Shannon. Uh, right, right there. Uh, both of these positions in the uh, parks department they are really the only reason they were funded was because those are projects that we're committed to. Uh, we got Fredonia Community Center that's going to be opening up. We also have uh, uh, the Nature Center at Rotary Park from a janitorial standpoint, and then we have the Eastland Green or the Weekly Park out there to maintain as well. And that's the sole reason I think the Budget Committee would agree that these positions were even approved because it's something we were committed to. Uh, the deputy clerk one, I mentioned uh, about Kelly's office, $10,000. These are, th this position has something to do with uh, notice of lien, is that how you say it? Kelly, is that how you say it? Sir, it's a new law that was passed last year, the noting of liens, and then the rest of it is just volume. And we feel like that position will be, we will be paid for in revenue. And then the last position is a probation officer at juvenile court. Kyle, you want to, you probably know those stats better than anybody. Do you want to go through that, I think, for the rationale on yes, why sir. that was approved? It was approved because with the juvenile court, um, we have a couple of different probation officers that have anywhere from 70 to 80 cases right now. The national average was considered safe is around 30 to 40, depending on the type of child they're dealing with. Um, so they are very much um, over their, um, what is considered a safe caseload. They're answering these calls at two in the morning, Sunday afternoons, uh, around the clock. So it's quite a bit for our team. And I think that would be the last one. If you just gently scroll through that list. Um, you can see all the, the, the requests from the sheriff's department and the jail, but uh, over almost $3.7 million in employee requests were cut, and we approved 230634 Any questions on new employees? All right, Shannon, next. Uh, reclassifications. These are the ones that, that were approved, and, and I, I can say, I think the reason for each and every one of these uh, positions being approved, and again, I would ask any of the budget committee members to chime in. When we did our pay study last year, it, it became not, not obvious, but there were some positions that weren't properly classified. And so as we went through, we heard each of these reclassification requests. There was one that was denied, uh, and uh, that was in IT, uh, but th the rest of these were approved and it was based upon what I think uh, the rationale that I used was that the, when we did the pay study, the classifications of these jobs were, uh, were out of line. So I'll just let you gently scroll through that. Um, Shannon, I don't know if you have any questions and I, I, I I'm not picking on the sheriff's department, but that's that's a big portion of that 224 right there, and um, uh, but those clerks were we all felt like again budget committee members somebody speak up uh, we felt like they were. Um, trying to recall all the conversations we had, if I remember correctly, I think they were classified as like a regular. Um, clerk in like another office, maybe uh, an example of a, uh, in the county clerk's office where, but when you looked at the 
if I remember correctly, the job descriptions, they, were, they, um, they differed in the duties and the responsibilities, even though the wording said clerk. Is that correct, I, Jefferson? I think, I think they had to receive NCIC certification. Yeah, and it was a yeah, certification. NCIC certification, mm -hmm. I think that, yep, okay. yep. Any questions on the employee cl reclassification? Hey, Shannon, if you go back to um, the summary sheet. And so looking at what we, those are our total expenses. And then our projected increase in the fund balance was uh, almost $7.9 million. So I don't know if anybody has any questions. We went through this pretty quick. Hopefully this was a little bit easier than looking at the other sheet. Uh, we thought we'd try to uh, break it out a little bit better. Um, this may not mean much, but does the classification, that would not change the step increases, would it? No, sir. Okay. That's what, all right, thank you. But it could be feasible uh, that some of those people that are getting reclassed could also be getting a step raise this year. We didn't look at that. We didn't even consider that. And I don't think it would be the right thing to do to look to see uh, and not reclassify somebody just because they were going to do a step, step increase based on the years of service that they had with Montgomery County. No. Commissioner Harper. What was the percentage, this is more for our human resources director, what was the percentage increase on the insurance? Five. Five percent. Any other questions? It, Shannon, if you go back to your uh, summary sheet, the one thing I didn't uh, go, if you'll go all the way to the bottom, the breakdown of the pennies for our tax rate, leaving the tax rate at 299, uh, 1.240 to the general fund, 0 0.110 to roads, 0 0.630 to general purpose school, 0 0.840 to debt service, uh, 0.115 to general capital, and 0 0.055 to school transportation for a total of 299. Any questions? Commissioner Gannon. Should, should we discuss the maintenance of effort in case the schools, in case the sales uh, tax isn't there? We may have to go and fund that. Good point. If you want to, you can explain it. I've talked enough today, I promise. <laughs> We have, as you know, most of us, we have maintenance of efforts with the school. And whatever we gave them last year, we have to give them this year, and if, or if we give them an extension. But we at least have to give them the minimum of next year. Well, they've kind of calculated a decrease in the sales tax, and if that hits and the sales tax doesn't rebound, potentially in order to reach our maintenance of effort, we may have to increase that. I think it was to the tune of about, about two, 600. Yeah. 640,000. Yeah. 640,000. Right. So that, that may be an adjustment that we may have to do later as well. And, and I think the mindset behind, uh, again, from the budget committee, and we had a, a pretty good discussion with the school system about that, even got somebody uh, from the state on the phone. Uh, it, it, yeah, two of them. Our conversation was, with CTAS was that they didn't feel like we should make an adjustment in the pennies, and that if, in fact, the sales tax was not there, then we'd make it up at the end of the year and we committed to the school system that we would look at it quarterly, and if we need to make an adjustment, we would, but if we commit those pennies, those pennies are committed, and we didn't feel like we were prepared to do that at this time. Commissioner Harper. Oh, okay. Commissioner Johnson. I was just gonna ask if we could get a copy of this email to us. Is that possible? Uh, of, of, of this spreadsheet? Yes. Uh, or, 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 oh, the the entire. Yeah, yeah. I I I, I thought they had that. I don't know, but Shannon's got her computer. She can email it to me right now. I don't know if she can do two things at once, but. 
Anything else? We, we will certainly get that to you. And I apologize. I thought y'all had it. Uh, is, is, any, is, is some of this in Dropbox? Okay, it's in the budget book. But we'll send you this. This is a little bit easier to get to than scrolling through the budget book. Any other questions? Well, let me uh, again say thanks to the budget committee, to all the staff uh, that was involved in the whole process, and I want to thank each and every one of you. Uh, I, I know that uh, I know Commissioner Hodges couldn't be here. He's having some health issues. Commissioner Lewis, uh, he's having some back issues. I'm not sure about Commissioner Knight, Butts, and Chandler. I know Commissioner Tangy Smith said she couldn't be here, but I, I appreciate y'all coming in here. Uh, I really do. I, but I thought it would be easier to do it this way. I think we're practicing social distancing. Uh, you can look where everybody's sitting out and Commissioner Bill and Commissioner Joe Smith, s sorry for putting y'all in the theater seats. We should have had popcorn for you. I apologize next time if we have to do this, we'll have popcorn for those that are sitting in the theater seat. Uh, but again, thank y'all. And uh, I guess we'll see everybody uh, next Monday night. We will be meeting here. Uh, and we'll go through the same protocol of checking everybody's temperature that comes in. We're gonna, we we're gonna WebEx in uh, all the department heads again. So if you have questions as we go through the budget process during informal. And so thank you all and good night. Oh, sorry, yeah, that, yeah, the first, June 1st is when we'll see y'all. Thank you.